Howdy. Let's check out some controversial, unsettling episodes of cartoons generally aimed at women. Sometimes getting disturbing, or maybe just too real. Interestingly, these girls' cartoons often focus more on psychological terrors compared to cartoons aimed more at males. There's also these recurring themes of our heroes' minds being dominated or controlled, and those terrors going on within our own minds are well worth talking about. So let's check out the top six darkest girls' cartoon episodes. Just a note, I'll be breaking my no anime rule to talk about a couple of exceptions, such as Sailor Moon. Because hell, we can't not talk about Sailor Moon's death-filled ending. Anyway, on to the countdown. Number 10. Minnie Mouse. Minnie takes care of Pluto. <laughs> this is actually the only Minnie or Mickey Mouse cartoon episode I know that has been outright banned in the USA. The reason the episode was banned was because of complaints of frightening moments. In fact, the entire story revolves around Pluto's paranoia that Minnie is trying to murder him in various disturbing ways. The episode starts by Mickey dropping off Pluto at Minnie's house. Thanks, Minnie. See you later. But, but, Mickey, yeah. but without any real consent from Minnie. Oh, fully. Which leads to Pluto's various nightmares of being killed in highly creative ways by Minnie. Like Minnie bludgeoning him to death with a morning stick. Leading to us watching from his dead body's view as his coffin is lowered into the ground and he's buried. But then, Pluto outright snaps from the terror, and he tries to really murder Minnie. Fortunately, he's too clumsy in his paranoia. And instead, Pluto gets sent to hell. Uh, again. You must be really getting quite familiar with this place. My favourite part of this episode is Pluto's fantasies are all spurred on by a very familiar sounding demon. Don't listen to him! You know what you gotta do. Voiced by Penn Jillette, my favourite magician. Minnie takes care of Pluto was a surprisingly dark escapade for Minnie. And for number nine, Tangled the Series, Painted Block. Making difficult choices is a part of life. Originally, I'd assumed Tangled the Series would mostly just be a fluff filled prolonging of the original movie's Happily Ever After. But jeez. <laughs> We can hear this unnerving hissing and this strange horror-like music as Pavlovian conditioning is used to enslave Rapunzel's mind. There's something that makes my skin crawl about how Rapunzel's mind is dominated in this episode. It even begins to blur the lines a bit between Rapunzel's free will and her mind-controlled state. Making difficult choices is a part of life. Part of life? In fact, the use of outright classical conditioning here is something I've almost never seen in a cartoon. It's like the Sorcerer Sugracha is a constant subtle whisper in Rapunzel's mind. It's just ugh, really unsettling for what I thought was a young girl's cartoon. I particularly like the message behind this one, when Rapunzel finally managed to regain control of her mind. Difficult choices are what make us who we are. In fact, I was really blown away by the soundtrack, characters, and story of this series. And I can now definitely recommend giving Tangle the series a look. And for number eight, My Little Pony Friendship is Magic, Lesson Zero. Ah, these female cartoons, they have a real fondness for the concept of mind manipulation, don't they? As you might have noticed, I find mind control an uncomfortable subject in cartoons. To me, there's just something about seeing characters we've grown to know and love for so long, suddenly losing all their humanity and ethics, all with just a flick of magic. In this infamous episode of My Little Pony, Twilight's compulsive need to fix problems spirals out of control. She rapidly becomes completely mentally unstable, hallucinating, and even talking to herself and begins toying with the minds of children, all in the name of satisfying her compulsions. In fact, Twilight outright warps the minds of these children from peacefully playing together into physically attacking one another. Help me! The one it needed spell works every time. And soon, the entire town becomes ensnared in Twilight's, uh, stuff, toy, mind control tactic? And a war begins over a well-loved stuffed toy with a nice mane? I like her 
Me? It's surprisingly uncomfortable seeing the entire town turn into mindless, out-of-control zombies by Twilight's magic, ruthlessly fighting one another just for her well-loved doll. It kind of shows if Twilight wanted, she could take over the entire town. While Celestia breaks it up in the end, seeing Twilight show this darker side was pretty confronting to some viewers. What could be called the leader of the main six ponies inadvertently becomes the villain of the episode. Not because she was corrupted or even tortured, but because she got bored and started to lose her mind. Personally, I try to juggle when I'm bored. It seems to help me process being alive better. Number seven, Winx Club, the Nightmare Monster. Okay, first, I should warn you. To me anyway, this four kids dub is ungodly terrible. It almost feels like half the conversations are there just to fill the space with random gibberish. Movies about parents always bum me out. That movie scared me. Can we please stop talking about it? But fortunately, even four kids' abysmal audio standards could not negate the creepiness of the Nightmare Gargoyle. We watched this black creature from the abyss silently breathing down sleeping Stella's neck. <laughs> Monsters invading the unconscious mind of sleeping victims is surprisingly dark for a Winx Club episode, only to then devour the Winx girl's nightmares, leaving us with nothing but a slither and an ear-piercing scream. <laughs> Although their nightmares are pretty demure, what disturbs me most about this black entity is nothing seems to stop it. In the pitch of night when everyone's sleeping, it sneaks through the walls and silently invades the mind of every Winx member. Like some sort of black, shape-changing mind parasite. Ugh. Even the music sounds kind of horror-like as it scuttles after its victims. It's always there, lurking just out of view as the victim sleeps. Or as Stella so elegantly puts it, Something was watching me or like actually crawling around in my brain or something. Eventually, the Winx girls do overcome this nightmare horror, but it still makes for some surprisingly unsettling moments. The Nightmare Gargoyle is certainly the darkest Winx Club episode I've ever seen. All right, Beastie, bring it on! And for number six, my life as a teenage robot, robot for all seasons. While Christmas episodes tend to have a rule of being more sappy and saccharine than regular episodes, this is probably the bleakest holiday special I've ever seen. Our hero Jenny is forcefully mind-controlled by an evil dictator, causing havoc to the town. And when she finally regains her control and escapes, all her loved ones have turned against her. Even her own mother willfully tries to attack and trap her. Skyway Patrol, this is Mama Bird. Baby Bird is in the nest. First Tuck, then Brad, and now my own mother! <laughs> Jenny later discovers that for a full year, she had lost all consciousness and had become a mindless machine of destruction on the town. In order to destroy the holidays, hell, a lot of her friends seem determined to outright kill her. We've sat back while our so-called friend has trashed every holiday this year, but not Christmas. Soon, it seems like there's no one left in the world that cares about Jenny. Even the colors are bleaker as she's hunted down by everyone who once loved her. But fortunately, Sheldon, who's always been in love with Jenny, never gave up on her. Sheldon! Wait, you're not scared of me? Of course not, Jenny. I... Oh, Sheldon! It's so good to see a friendly face. Robot for All Seasons is simultaneously dark <laughs> and very silly at the same time. In true old school Nickelodeon fashion. Number five, Bratz, Skeletons in the Closet. Surprisingly enough, even Bratz had a dark episode about murder. You're next. Yeah, Bertine's like going to slowly torture you until you're history. After the Tweevils find a skeleton in Bertine's closet, the Bratz girls theorize that Bertine murdered someone with an ax before butchering and boxing up their remains. This leads to a surprising amount of nightmare footage about how the Bratz girls are killed or tortured by Birdine themselves. The Bratz girls might have their faces burned off or might be forced to <gasps> dance forever. Okay, that one's just silly. Can I stop now? I'll keep you dancing forever. You'll even be dancing on your grave. <laughs> There's this weird frequent portrayal of creepy looking uncanny chattering skeletons in this one giving us some really unsettling scenes of skeletons in Bratz's 
already creepy looking, bad CG animation style. There's even a scene where Casey and Kirsty's carcasses are boxed up and turned to bones, chattering away at Jade until their skulls are shattered into pieces by Birdine. You don't have to fall apart over it. Aw, Heather went all to pieces. <laughs> On the subject of Burdine, has anyone else noticed that the lovely Wendy Malick is just loving her role as the villain? She just lives the role and really helps to bring some so bad it's good charm to this mostly bad girls cartoon. <laughs> Skeletons in the Closet leaves us with a good strong message about doing what you think is right, even in the face of prejudice, for as lousy a role model as the Bratz girls could be. This series did often have some fun quirks. And for number four, as told by Ginger, and she was gone. This is one of those rare times we see depression and suicide being the primary discussion in a cartoon episode. After Ginger writes a poem she made up, it's interpreted as a suicide letter by her teachers and friends. So everyone starts assuming she's depressed. If you ever did want to go away, we just hope that you tell us. You guys. But as to be expected from As Told by Ginger, it's discussed in an intelligent, thoughtful, considerate manner, giving the perspective of the person affected and their peers and family, and the perspective of how different people respond to this extra attention. Something I like is this episode lightly addresses labeling theory, where basically, if a person is labeled as good or bad by society, they can begin to conform to this label. So if Ginger is labeled as depressed, she may begin to become more depressed to fit that label. This episode is important because this is something that absolutely happens in schools, home life, or work life. So I'm glad to see subjects like depression and suicide being respectfully and thoughtfully discussed to kids. And the final speech given is so beautiful that I wish I was able to compress it into my short review format. But instead, I recommend you check this episode out for yourself. How do you do that? Listen, kid, you don't have to be afraid of your feelings, ever, no matter what they are. And no one knows you better than you know yourself. And the third darkest girls cartoon episode is... Sailor Moon, Death of the Sailor Guardians, the tragic final battle. Well, I could end the review right there with that title, couldn't I? Yeah, let's see you talk your way out of all the main characters dying, Deke Animation. How do you censor this for kids? They were trapped. Oh, come on, really? Are kids even gonna buy that? Fine, have it your way. It's like saying the Saiyans are all sent to another dimension whenever they die of blood loss. In fact, this episode's scenes were so butchered in the English dub that they managed to fit their freakishly deformed censored version into one episode, cutting major plot points like the death of each individual Sailor Scout. Hell, they even cut Tuxedo Mask outright dying in Sailor Moon's arms in a very powerful emotional scene. Can't have that emotionally gripping and beautiful moment for the kids. It has that troublesome little factor of the universe that applies to all living things. Can't have that. We even get the death of the villain cut from the episode. The villain? Really? Deke Animation, you're making Disney look controversial. But anyway, Death of the Sailor Scouts wasn't just a surprise episode. It was an emotional gut punch to so many Sailor Scout fans as they watch all the characters they've grown to love dying before their eyes. In fact, the entire battleground of the Negaverse is shattered from within, and we see everyone in the Negaverse is killed. Just cheapest. But then it's okay, because apparently they're in another dimension now where they don't remember the Negaverse? Oh, that's just a last minute cop out. People aren't zombies, they're allowed to stay dead. And I'm sorry if people grew up with this, but looking back, holy hell did this English dub stink. No, you can't! Serena, don't! <gasps> Serena! <gasps> it doesn't make sense, it's illogically structured, it's just bad. But yes, heavily censored death and mayhem. And the second darkest girls cartoon episode is... Braceface, the controversial episodes. It deserves to be said, Braceface is a brave cartoon. It covers menstruation, racism, underage drinking, underage smoking... <coughs> <coughs>
even anorexia gets addressed. In fact, the body image episode known as Busted was completely banned in the US. Let's start with the anorexia episode, as it personally hit me pretty deeply. As the episode progresses, we can actually see Sharon's body slowly getting more emaciated. Tiny details like seeing her collarbones more clearly, the shadows on her eyes becoming more sunken as she continues the OCD cycle of starving herself. She begins losing energy, fainting. If you've ever known or ever been someone in this situation, it's quite confronting. <sighs> The episode on women's menstruation covers, from an ignorant guy's perspective anyway, a fairly realistic scenario of Sharon's first menstruation. The episode's titled, The Worst Date Ever, Period. <laughs> oh, that's terrible. <laughs> There was also an openly gay character on Brace Face, which is fortunately something we get to see more nowadays. And because of his sexuality, which we choose about as much as we choose the color of our skin, Dion is alienated from other students and gets awful mistreatment. Eventually, even Sharon starts to isolate herself from Dion, all in the name of not being shunned herself. In fact, Dion coming out about being gay was the reason season three didn't air in America. And finally, let's discuss the band episode Busted. Sharon is tired of being seen as a little girl and decides to enhance the look of her chest with a pump bra. And while a woman has every right to express a little, uh, titillation, <laughs> Sorry. This didn't exactly attract the kind of guys who wanted to get to know Sharon as a person. And eventually, she has a wardrobe malfunction at a party that would make even a porn star cringe. Come on. While Brace Face can be awkward and cringeworthy at times, the cartoon should be applauded for touching on so many controversial subjects. Sometimes they're big mistakes that blow up in your face. And just a quick honorable mention too, My Little Pony Friendship is Magic, Party of One. This episode is mainly remembered for Pinky's psychotic breakdown as she starts hearing voices and imagining her toys being alive. She's talked down in the end, but this was the first time I really saw Pinkie Pie completely lose it. Anyway, on to number one. And the number one Darkest Girls cartoon episode is... Earth made in a Juno, the death of a nation. Very few people will probably recognize this cartoon, so I'll try and keep it brief. But it is so dark and so powerful, I just really wanted to talk about it. Once again, I'm breaking my no anime rule, but I've remembered this girl's cartoon episode for 15 years now, and it's certainly the darkest girl's cartoon episode I've seen to this day. Imagine if all of our modern society was shattered in an instant. All electricity, all materials that have petrochemicals in them, were suddenly destroyed. Plastic, adhesives, anything related to petroleum, gone. We see one of the most realistic breakdowns of modern civilization I've ever seen. People scurrying to overcrowded shelters in dark cities, clinging together in the cold, slowly starving. And our hero Juna soon discovers that the countries of the world have quarantined Japan. Does that mean you're gonna let everyone die? So Juna takes matters into her own hands, racing to Japan to try and save the country. This remains among the most potent, beautiful, and eye-opening cartoons I've ever watched. And it's all done realistically, thoughtfully, and all in 13 episodes. While certain parts should be taken with a grain of salt, I personally believe there's a lot to be learnt from Earth Made in a Juno. And male or female, I personally recommend this 13 episode series to anyone who's curious. If only so I have someone to talk to about what these other episodes mean. If one of us can change the way we think, then all of us can change. What if you're the first one who changes? Why? You become an outcast of society. And I definitely want to make it clear, I don't dislike any of these episodes. As you know, it's vitally important we be able to discuss these subjects, not with just the young, but show it's okay to discuss them with adults too. The greatest fear still comes from that which we don't understand. And whether it be prejudice, the human mind, or just coping with being alive, both our cartoons and you and I should always know it's okay to discuss these factors of life. And if you think I missed a particularly dark girls cartoon episode, feel free to leave your own thoughts in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.